third proposition. And this relates to counterterrorism. I think it's important, and this draws upon the just war tradition, it's important to be able to acknowledge that a forcible response to a terrorist act, to a terrorist group, is permissible. Human dignity says, yes, you can use military force to prevent, to deter, to stop a terrorist group or a terrorist act. Traditionally, laws of war were murky on this. You tended to think of responding to states that engage in these kinds of activities. I think after 9-11, the UN Security Council was very clear from a legal perspective that the acts of Al-Qaeda on September 11 rose to the level of an armed attack under the UN Charter, empowering states to take action in self-defense. I think that's right. I think human dignity says that. You can respond forcibly to terrorist acts. Now, I think it's also important to note that just as customary international law limits the state to acting only out of necessity and responding in a proportionate way, so too in responding to terrorist acts, the actors that do this need to respond out of necessity and a, in a proportionate way. And proportionality I'm interpreting as proportionate to ending the threat. But I think it's very important to look at those limitations, but you need to acknowledge that use of force to counter terrorism is, is completely permissible. Fourth proposition. Human dignity says that when individuals who are terrorists are captured and detained, they must be treated humanely. They must be treated humanely. One of the problems with the Geneva Conventions, and in particular the third Geneva Convention, which is the one dealing with prisoners of war, is that it's unclear how individuals that we would call terrorists fall under the protection of the Third Geneva Convention. And this was a matter of great discussion in the United States and, in, and elsewhere. And we saw memos by people like Jay Bybee and, and John Yu making various claims about these individuals not being entitled to any protections under the Geneva Conventions and, and so on. Now, from my perspective, and I'll get to a recommendation later on, the best guideline is to treat these individuals as though they were prisoners of war, fundamentally and basically. Look at the Geneva Conventions, look at the basic protections there and say, human dignity says we're going to err on the side of giving you these protections under the Geneva Conventions. Whether we're legally required to, th that's, a, that's a different issue. Whether we're legally obligated to do it is a different issue, but the concept of human dignity says we should affirm the individuals and we should do this by giving them these kinds of guarantees. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that we need to use a common sense definition of torture, and again, not to keep throwing barbs at someone like John Yu or, or Jay Bybee, but we need to understand torture in the common sense way we would, uh, something that causes severe pain or suffering. I think people have a sense as to what that is. You err on the side of being cautious. You err on the side of protecting the individual, not on the side of saying, well, uh, unless it causes organ damage, it's, it's not torture. So I think it, it says that. It also says, treating these individuals humanely, that we should be very careful of this concept of indefinite detention. In traditional warfare, <coughs> individuals who are prisoners of war can be detained lawfully until the end of the conflict. Okay. Well, we knew what that meant with World War I. We knew what it meant with World War II. Uh, we even knew what it meant with Vietnam. But what does that mean on a scale where we're talking about a global war on terror? Does the conflict go on forever and these individuals be subject to indefinite detention? Those have been the arguments that have been made as best as I can understand it by the last two administrations, the last two presidents. Well, human dignity says, let's revisit that. Let's look at some kind of review that we can give of these individuals. Let's not just say, well, the conflict goes on forever, therefore we can have indefinite detention. 